So what were we really talking about is we're talking about epigenetics. We're not talking about removing and inserting genes. We're talking about how do we take the genes that we have, make them work better, and how, now that we're just at the forefront of learning to turn the switches on and off for the right groups of genes, how do we apply that to that? So epigenetics, let's take a look at how it would work, actually work inside you. So let's say you have a specific compound, like this, the compound we talked about, AC11, these little red dots. They would float around your, your circulatory system, get into the cell, into the deep throat, go through that nuclear pore, go right into the nucleus, and basically what they do is they open up the folding of the DNA, they open up the chromatin. And by doing that, a methyl group can get in here or be removed. And that's basically the very basic mechanism of how we can alter and change genes, positively or negative, by getting certain compounds in here that will either start the DNA repair gene or turn it off, or inhibit inflammatory compounds or turn them on. Um, fatty acids work this way. By decreasing inflammation, they get into the gene and actually alter how genes get turned on and off. So the key question that, was, uh, that arise was, you know, where do we get the right combinations of things and how do we know which ones to use? Uh, DNA damage, by the way, also causes key changes to your genes, okay? And if, you're, if your damage is excessive, you end up with a problem in both your somatic and your stem cell pools. And, and again, we talked about how these changes in those methyl groups turn genes on and off. The key genes that we've been looking at are genes that are involved in the genes that make senescence, which we, one, that gene is called mTOR. NF-kappa B, TNF-alpha, I'm gonna talk dirty here for some of the doctors here who know some of these genes, um, P53, um, uh, P16, P16 ink 4A, beta galactosidase, a whole bunch of these compounds are activated during the normal cellular aging process. Well, we've chosen compounds that can actually inhibit or keep those genes from working. So, again, looking at DNA repair, apoptosis, inflammatory responses, when you control those, the hormones that your body normally, ma normally makes work more efficiently and you actually make more of your own hormones. So all of these things fit together. So why should you be offering supplements as a healthcare professional? Okay, well, let's talk about this for a minute because I think this is one of the reasons why most of you are here, right? So basically the human body was designed to run on natural fuel from plants, from herbs, from vegetables, from natural sources. You know, genetically we evolved over the last 500 to 600,000 years ago. There were no Burger Kings. There were no McDonald's. In fact, we know now today if you run on the fuel of fast food, you're going to die quicker, have a miserably unhealthy life, and everything that you've been genetically designed with, uh, as well as breathing the air we breathe, the stress we have, you're basically running contrary to the whole genetic software that you as a human being were designed to run on. Okay? Um, in addition to this, the general industry problems, which is, which is tremendous in, in supplement in the supplement industry, that is the lack of regulatory oversight, the lack of uh, real scientific studies, creates mass confusion in anybody who wants to really actively get involved in supplementation. You know, people don't know what to take, what combines with what, and how much to take. And frankly, the average person goes to the vitamin store and buys several different bottles of different nutrients because they believe each one is good for them individually. What about the, um, and, and what about the combination when they're all taken together? Well, we know that this. There's a, there's a program, a genetic program inside your cell next to the mitochondria called NRF2. This is a genetic program that normally your body makes its own intrinsic antioxidants. If you didn't eat at all, you would make superoxide desmutase, uh, glutathione peroxidase, and catalase. Those are the key intrinsic antioxidants every cell makes to buffer the free radicals that are being made inside your mitochondria as you're making energy, ATP. If you take too many antioxidants, you turn off your genetic pathway. Basically, you remove the muffler inside your cell so that the free radicals are, are being produced even more. So when people come in and say, oh, I'm taking all of this stuff and I feel worse, that's one of the reasons why, because they don't know what they're doing. And frankly, doctors didn't even know about this until about five or six years ago. So one of the key things was to take a look at what compounds work synergistically, work with the genetic software we have, and are not competitive. 
So basically, with the product we've been producing, this has been this is nine years in development. Um, this product not only replaces your basic vitamin mineral need, but is based on the science of epigenetics and, and targets the key genes involved in health cells age. Okay. So what we did is we hired a PhD nutritionist from a major university to look at what ingredients, as we created our formula, would target the right genes and would they regulate them up or down. So down, the red, the red lines you're going to see are down regulating or inhibiting genes and the blue lines you're going to see are what actually stimulates genes or turns them back on. So for instance, in, the, in healthy cell we have a series of compartmental um, groups of, of specific nutrients and compounds that work in different components of the cell. So if you look at the antioxidants, okay, we've chosen specific antioxidants to inhibit inflammatory compounds to inhibit the COX-2 enzyme. And NF-kappa B, which is really the origin, NF-kappa B stimulates TNF-alpha, which then makes all the inflammatory cytokines. If you can turn NF-kappa B off, you turn all the inflammation cascade off at, the, at its origin. Well, AC-11 happens to be one of the most potent NF-kappa B inhibitors, which is the other reason why we've included it. And you'll see each one of these things in each compartment. We can go to the next one. For instance, in the mitochondrial area, how do we help our cells make more energy, which is why when our clinical trials went on and we looked at people and we looked at did they feel more energetic, did they feel better, was, there was a dramatic difference because we started to look at different compounds that would actually interact, for instance, in energy production, alpha-lipoic acid, benfotamine, nicotinamide, uh, rib ribose, all the things that help your cells make more, more ATP were included in the other things that inhibited oxidative stress and other things inside of mitochondria we included to downregulate those genes. Next. And the most important thing to me was the DNA damage repair and the turning the genes on and off because right now out of those 100 trillion cells we probably have 20% of those cells sitting in quiescence and early senescence. Remember I showed you that? Because if we could reboot those cells we not only make less senescent cells, we now have more of a repair mechanism. We can stay healthier longer if we did just that. So this component of Healthy Cell Plus started to look at how do we enhance the methylation, put, back, put those methyl groups back on the right portion of the promoter region. How do we, we talk about NRF2, okay? We want to, we want to make sure that, that this key process isn't, isn't, isn't negative. Resveratrol turns on sort one, uh, SIRT1 and turns on, helps stimulate NRF2. So each one of these compounds and each one of these complexes in this product were basically targeted at specific genes and to look at their synergy. Um, mTOR inhibitors probably going to be the next big frontier in anti-aging. Again, we, we did a whole bunch of uh, ingredients here, particular, particularly the anthocyanidines. And I'll make a quick comment. Metformin. How many people treat uh, diabetics with metformin in this room? Metformin is one of the most potent AMPK mTOR inhibitors. There's a new study out right now called the TAME study, T-A-M-E, which is looking at a multi-center study nationally, which will be looking at thousands of people. Why are they doing this? Because diabetics who are on metformin for years live longer than people who don't have diabetes. Because of it's in, they're inhibiting senescent cells and they're, it, it, they actually switch on about 20 different genes that are, are ideal for cell aging. Okay, tumor suppressor function, telomere maintenance, again, we did this whole thing, and I'll skip over all these because it's a little redundant if I keep on telling you, but you all get the picture. It's about learning what synergistic blends of compounds that are targeted for specific genes in the right direction. The